All right, Superhero Stepdad back again. I'm going to show you uh, my next part of the PSA order that I'm prepping to send off. This is the more modern cards, which is defined as 1980 to present. And there's, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 cards here or so. So let's take a look and see what we got. We have the uh, Fernando Valenzuela slash Mike Sosha rookie from 1981 Tops. If I'm not mistaken, there are zero PSA 10s of this card. So pretty sure PSA wants to keep that myth alive. So they're probably not going to give this a 10, even though it's it's incredible shape. But I don't think they're going to give any of these cards a 10. They just want to keep that alive. If one were to ever turn up as a 10, it would just... It would sell for like 40 or 50 trillion dollars, I think. You could probably buy your own country. But I, I think this has a solid shot at a nine. But yeah, we'll see. 81 Kirk Gibson. I think I have this pre-graded as a nine. Just a cool card. It's tough to get that high graded. This is one of my favorite cards. The Cal Ripken Jr. 82 Tops uh, traded rookie card. Ronnie Lott, his rookie. I think I have this pre-graded as an eight or a nine. Nice card. 83 tops, Ricky Henderson. This card, you know, once you get into this junk wax, it's really only worth sending these in if you think you have a decent shot at a 10. So, uh, I mean, it looks great. They're, the centering's perfect. There's not really any dings or anything. So I think it has like a 50-50 shot at a 10. So I figured, why not? We'll send this in. Daryl Strawberries. What is this? 83 Tops Traded. It's pretty decent. I think this one may be a little bit off top to bottom. A little thicker on the bottom there. Still a good card. 84 Tops. Nolan Ryan. I think this has an outside shot at a 10. Again, it's in great shape. You know, PSA is just... They'll go over this just, you know with a fine tooth comb, if you will, but there's nothing wrong. There's no dings, no, there's no white showing on the edges or the corners or anything on this card. It's perfectly centered. So I would like to get a 10 on it, but I guess we'll find out. 85 Sean Dunstan rookie, 85 tops. This is one of those cards that's like, why am I sending this in? And I looked it up and like nines are selling for like 50 bucks and it's, you know, low pop. It's kind of hard to find. So uh, this one's in great shape. I think it's just, yeah, some specs on the sleeve there. So, I mean, there's no issues with it. It's perfectly centered. So I figure if I get a 10, it's probably worth 150 bucks. One of those iconic cards here, the Bo Jackson 86 tops uh, traded. Not the Tiffany version, which is, you know, much more rare and sought after, but still a solid card here. Probably get an eight on it, maybe nine. This is one of my favorite cards from when I was younger, the 86 Fleer Traded, or Update, 86 Fleer Update, Will Clark. I mean, Will Clark was the man back in the late 80s, you know, he was so cool. But it's just such a cool card. Will Clark, has, he's one of those players from the era that just had really cool cards. He was just so cool. <laughs> How many times can I say cool? My all-time favorite player, Mike Schmidt. I'm sending this one in because uh, he's my favorite player, and it's just, it's perfectly centered. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, no dings on that back, which is where they'll get you because it's so easy to ding those up or to see any white showing. So I figured I have it pre-graded as a 10. I wasn't going to send it in unless I thought it was a 10. 10s are selling for like 75, 80 bucks, something like that, because it's kind of hard to get. So I figured let's take a chance on that. This is, the, you know, the 90 Griffey. Yeah, it's 90. Um, is that the bloody variant? I think so. That you can see right there, that little whatever uh one of his coolest cards i think this it's just such a cool iconic pose this one's perfectly centered and hoping for a 10 on it 10s are rare tough to get because there's so much of this so many of these out there but i guess we'll find out this is a uh what is it the desert shield which was from 90 was at 91 tops the cards that were sent to the military back during the uh, first Iraq war back in 91. And there was only what, 2,500 of these sets that were produced, I believe. And it's like so hard to find these nowadays because most of them didn't, you know, the military people either left them there or they didn't survive or whatever the, the cards that is, I'm sorry. Um, 
so this is just Dennis Cook. You know, even the commons, if you get them in high grade, can be worth a lot of money. So hoping that uh, this one will grade well. I know there are a lot of counterfeits on this. I got this from a reputable dealer, so hopefully it doesn't, hopefully BSA says it's authentic. I only paid like $5 for it because it is a common, but we'll see if it comes back well. 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle card. It looks pretty good. I'm hoping it grades a 10. Yeah, just kidding. It's one of those uh, 96 inserts of the card, but still it is in great shape. So I aim it's a little off centered top to bright or top to bottom. So maybe it gets a nine, but these cards are starting to tick up in value because this, the original, this is, you know, the most iconic card of all time. So people are wanting any older version, if you will, of this card that they can find. And this one is one of the nicer ones. Roy Halladay, RIP Bowman Chrome rookie card. What is this? 97, I believe. I saw him at spring training back in 2014 with the Phillies and um, one of the greatest talents that the game has ever seen. Such a beautiful card. It's gone too soon. <laughs> this card here, the David Ortiz flare wave of the future. It's like he's surfing. Sorry. Um, his rookie, one of his rookie cards. It's in pretty good shape. I don't, I think I have it pre-graded as a nine, but still this one of those ex uh, start eight 2000 curtis martin one of those underrated running backs from back in the day it's a nice card these cards are really hard to find especially in good shape i was surprised i got this i don't even remember what i got it in it was like in a bundle with a bunch of random cards and i didn't think it was worth anything i looked it up and high grades of this card are worth a lot of money so i looked it over and it seems like it's in pretty decent shape so i'm like i will send that in Speaking of start eight 2001, Kobe Bryant, a uh, better card here. So nice Kobe insert. I don't know what to expect from this because it's always so difficult to judge how you're going to get one of these die cut cards graded, especially whenever it's, you know, not just your typical die cut, but it's, you know, all kinds of shapes and whatnot. So I guess we'll find out when it comes back. <laughs> Pau Gasol, Topps Chrome Refractor with, is that the Rookie Cup there? Yeah. Heard that Topps is going to be making basketball cards coming up in a year or two. Or I guess Fanatics once they start making. But be curious to see if they, how those cards come out. But this isn't in good shape. Yadier Molina, his Topps, not the Chrome, just the regular Topps Rookie. This card is, uh, it's, it's hard to get tens on this card. So I had one and I sold it and I had so much interest in it. Everybody wanted it. So I bought another set and a factory set. And this one seems to be in pretty good shape for us. So I'm going to send it in. Next stack. Joe Maurer rookie, the tops gold, which is numbered. Where's the number numberings right there to 2004 in pretty good shape he might might be hall of famer um you know he's one of the catchers is one of those positions where you don't have to have i was talking with my wife about this you don't really have to have the the typical stats like 500 homers or 3,000 hits or whatnot you know you can you know you're, you're like the leader of the team so you know might make it the hall of fame deserves it max scherzer he is my favorite pitcher of the past 20 years and one of my favorites of all time. This is, uh, not everybody agrees with me on that, but I think he's the pitcher of our generation. And this is one of my favorite cards of all time. And it's a pretty good copy I picked up at a show and I'm going to send that one in. Matthew Stafford, I'm so torn on his future in the hobby. Uh, he's got a Super Bowl, he's on pace, on pace. To put up numbers that uh, passing yards and whatnot, he could be top five all time in passing yards. If he stays healthy and just decides to keep playing, he could be right there, you know, second behind Tom Brady, perhaps. You never know. His refractor isn't numbered, unfortunately. There's a lot of these out there, but these cards are so cheap to get right now. Like a PSA 9 is under 100 bucks. If you look at PSA 9s of comparable quarterbacks like Drew Brees or Eli Manning or something like that, theirs are way more expensive. So I'm like, 
Is he worth holding on to for the long term? Just dump it now and sell them? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Because, you know, 10 years from now, I mean, he's probably going to be in the Hall of Fame. Like I said, Super Bowl, he's got all the, he's got the good stats. I think his cards are going to go up. So with that in mind, I also have the blue refractor, which is numbered. I believe, aren't the blues numbered? Oh no, it's the coppers that are numbered. I have a copper graded, but I don't have a raw one to send in. But anyway, the blues are more rare, but there's the blue. And then this score rookie as well, which is the throwback to the 89 score, you know, where it has the Troy Aikman and Barry Sanders and uh, who's the other one? Um, I don't know, that infamous or that the famous 1989 score set. It's one of the more rare cards from his rookie set. Here's another one of the cards that's like, why is NNS in? Well, Kenley Jansen is on pace for a Hall of Fame career, and he has like over 400 saves somewhere in that neighborhood. And if he can continue this career resurgence, there's no telling how many he could end up with. I doubt he's going to catch Mariano Rivera, but it's most likely he could be top five all time, maybe top three. He's probably going to be Hall of Famer one day. And this gold rookie is in really great shape. You know, of course, the golds are um, numbered to the year they come out, which is 2010 there. So it was only a couple bucks. You'd be surprised to see how much these cards sell for. Even his base card in a 10 is like 100 bucks from this set. So don't sleep on cards like this. They will surprise you. Buster Posey. Buster Posey is another one of those players that just has really cool cards. I really like the look of this card. Most of Buster's rookie cards are so cool looking. This is his green, which is numbered out of 599. I think this is the same set that... Is this the same set that Giancarlo Stanton's in? I can't recall. But... Um, yeah, just such a cool card. And he, I believe he will be in the Hall of Fame as well. And I have my current favorite player, Bryce Harper, because I am a Phillies fan. I have a, I have a bunch of these graded, so I picked up a couple more Raws. His rookie card, numbered of uh, 2012. Not expecting 10s out of these. You know, they're almost impossible to get 10s, but I'd be happy with a couple 9s. So we'll see. And then I have one of the Target Reds, which is way more rare. I think there's only like 50 of this card total graded by PSA, somewhere in that neighborhood. I might be wrong. It might be 100 total graded, but I know it's not many at all. These aren't serial numbered. The Target Reds are not serial numbered, but they're extremely low print. So this one is in... That's, that little mark there is not on this thing, but that there's a ding on the corner. So I'm guessing maybe an eight on this card, but still. He's so undervalued right now because he's hurt, but I mean, two MVPs on pace for 500 home runs, 3,000 hits potential. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. Nolan Arenado, speaking of the same stats, another target MV, or target red border for Nolan Arenado's rookie card. He's another one of those players that right now I think is a good buy long term so i got a second one of his red these cards are really hard to find and in good shape so i'm getting those next up i have steph curry he's one of the best he's one of my favorite players of all time the home and away version or variants from i don't know what set this is complete panini complete maybe i don't know what that is i'm not a big basketball collector but i am a big fan and Steph is my favorite. Steph and Giannis right now are the two best. I think once LeBron retires, Steph is going to be not too far behind him. So I think Giannis will probably be the face of the league after LeBron. But um, can't go wrong with Steph. Home and aways. Ozzie Albies. I have his gold rookie. He is one of the best players on a team with so much young talent that he's getting overshadowed by Acuna. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, Cooney is incredible. But Albies is really good, too. This is his gold rookie numbered out of 2018. And then I also have Albies Topps Chrome Gold Refractor, which is numbered out of 50. Top Chrome update. Um, yeah, that is one I might be holding for quite a while. Sandy Alcantara, the uh, Cy Young, reigning Cy Young winner. He is a throwback to an older, to a vintage era, if you will. 
Right now we're sitting at uh, middle of April. We're about two weeks or so into the baseball season. And he is currently the only pitcher in the league that has completed a game. <laughs> he has one complete game and it was a shutout. And yeah, he is somebody who just, you know, in an era where most starting pitchers will throw five innings, if you're lucky six, he can lead the league with complete games and maybe get 10, 12. And um, don't even get me started on that whole issue with why they don't. But anyway, this is his Topps Chrome Refractor Rookie Autograph, numbered out of 499. I think he's one of the best. He's got potential to be one of the best in the game. So I picked that up. I have a few, again, like I said, Bryce is my favorite current player, and I am a Phillies fan. I understand why people do not like him, but I do like him. And I picked up some of his rare parallels and short print cards. This is Tops from 2019. I don't know what this parallel is called, but it is a cool card. So I picked that one up. This is Topps Chrome Gold Refractor numbered out of 50 from the uh, 2020 set. This is also, I think, the photo variation, if I'm not mistaken. It is a refractor. It's not, there we can get a little refracting. There we go. Dylan C. sees another one of those pitchers that is starting off with a phenomenal, you know, to have a phenomenal career potentially. And, you know, check out his stats. He's a solid... 200 plus strikeouts each of or last year and you know he's got potential to win a Cy Young here and there and you know he's on a, a team the White Sox that is an up and coming team you know they got a lot of offense you know Luis Robert we'll see if uh, they can put everything together and you know maybe make a playoff run but this is his Bowman Chrome rookie um, autograph gold refractor number to 50. And his cards are surprisingly cheap, as is expected from a lot of pitchers. You know, he doesn't have the hardware yet. He doesn't have the MVP or, I mean, the Cy Young or anything yet. But I think, I don't know, I think I only paid like 50 bucks or something for this card. It was really low. And it's like, I, you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> you know, autograph gold refractor, first Bowman, or not first Bowman Chrome, but Bowman Chrome with the rookie. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to jump on that all day. Uh, forgive me, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I got this card in a bulk deal. I know that she is uh, obviously a WWE wrestler, but it's her autograph card numbered out of 199, Refractor. I, I don't really follow wrestling anymore. I used to when I was a kid. I mean, I was a huge fan back in the you know 80s and, and a little bit in the 90s, but I don't really follow it anymore. But I got that, and it looked like it was in good shape. A few more Bryce Harper rares. This one is insanely rare. The Dugout Peaks from Topps Opening Day. You can see the little the eyes there peeking. These cards are insanely, insanely rare to find from 2022. Um, yeah, so I got that one to send in. And then I also have from Opening Day the Topps Luck of the Irish. For whenever they wear the uh, green jerseys. A lot of teams will wear the green jerseys for... Um, St. Patrick's Day. So I got that Bryce, also from 2022. This is such a cool card. MVP caliber, you got Otani and Trout. This is the green numbered out of um, 499. I mean, that's arguably the two best players in the game right now. So it's a nice card. And my last card, which might be the coolest looking card that's been out in years, the Aaron Judge Field of Dreams card that came out from that game that they played at the, uh, I don't know, was it the Cornfield Stadium in Iowa? I can't recall if that's where they played it or if they had to move it. But, yeah, that card, that's just such an awesome card of the reigning MVP. So that is, as of now, the card order that I'm prepping to send off to PSA. It's, like I said, it's mid-April 2023. Uh, PSA has a stated 65 business day return on these cards, so I'm not expecting these to be back before summer, you know, hopefully by 4th of July, somewhere there. Hopefully they're back by the National, so I can move some of them by the, you know, at the show. I will let you know whenever they're back, and I will have more videos to come. Thank you for watching.